Hi everyone, and welcome to a new review. So today I am reviewing the much anticipated Caller X Malice. Um, it is one of my favorite games in the otome genre. I honestly, not a lot of other games rival it, which is surprising that I haven't played the fan disc yet, because it is one of my favorite games out there for the otome like genre. That is translated in English, because there's other in Japanese that I may not know of. <laughs> anyway. So, for the Color X Malice Otome game, I will be reviewing it on five elements. The main storyline, the character stories or the side stories, the graphics, the translations, and the mechanics. All of these will be out of 10. Then I will reach a grand total once I do like the middle ground of all those. And if it is over five, it's probably worth it. Let's get into it. In Color X Malice, you play a rookie police officer who is thrown into an intense case called X Day, which is multiple murders done by a terrorist group called Adonis. Someone in this organization attacks the female character, your character, and puts a collar on her that could inject poison at any time if she doesn't follow their instructions. She needs to explore the X Day incidents and investigate them. Through this attack, she meets a group of investigators who used to be part of the police force and are now looking into these murders secretly. Before we go any further, there are some questions I have to answer every single time. You know this by now. Did I fall for a character? Oh, yes, I did. Minio Enomoto has my heart in a clutch in his hand. He is grabbing it very tight and he's not letting go. <laughs> As for the merch, yes, there is plenty of merch. It's actually really nice. Um, I'm a personal fan of merch and I have some myself. I need to stop. But there is merch for this game as well, which is very nice. Now, before we start, this game has a lot of trigger warnings. So hold still for a second while I mention them very quickly. For the triggers, there is terrorism, gore, blood, violence, police corruption, gun violence, knife violence, murder, suicide, manipulation, mental health issues, moral dilemmas. Good? We're good? Okay. Now this game has been out on two platforms, the PS Vita and the Switch. The Switch now has the fan disc as well, Color X Mouse Unlimited. So if you want to have like the same kind of platform, you can buy both on the Switch. For the graphics, it is the same artist that did Amnesia Memories. So the style is a 10 out of 10. The graphics, 10 out of 10. There's no glitches, the art style is super good, the shading, the highlights, it's good. It's the same as Amnesia Memories. I love it. I love it. As for the mechanics, you have the usual option of like tracking romance, the otome option base where your choices influence the story. But on top of that, you have three new systems that I am absolutely in love with. The first one is the investigation. Similar to Danganronpa V3, you can click on certain words to progress the investigation, which I think is genius and I love it, especially in this context of terrorism, police force, I think it's great. You also have the elevator system, which helps when you are in the female lead's workplace to travel from places to places depending on what you need for the investigation. You also have trigger mode. So in this case, you actually need to shoot targets on screen to be able to advance the story or else you would get a bad ending. That's pretty nifty. So for the mechanics, I give it a 9 out of 10 because I want to be able to track the romance better. But besides that, now, for the main storyline, things that I liked and things that I did not like. So for me, the main story already is a 9 out of 10. It is super interesting. The premise is very different. I like it quite a bit. Just the fact that it has darker themes than most Otome games makes it very interesting and very different from most Otome games. Because in my personal opinion, there is a lot of romantic elements in this game. It is clearly an Otome game and not a visual novel. But the main story is so interesting that the romance element don't feel like they've been added on. It feels like it's part of the story. And because the main storyline is so well built and the characters are so well adapted to the environment of the main story, I think it's great. Another thing I like is the moral dilemma about justice. Some of it, it is a trigger warning for some people because moral dilemma is really hard on some people. But in this game, it is so good. 
it is so good how you have to pick and choose what you're as a police officer what is good what is bad and what is not totally bad what is not totally good i think it's really great it makes me intrigued it makes me want to know more about the game saying intrigued there's a lot of intrigue I consider myself kind of a smarty pants and trying to figure out like who is the like head of the terrorist group or what's happening behind the terror who's the next person that's gonna get attacked it was hard and I liked it because I was surprised it wasn't predictable it was nice because I was surprised I didn't see anything coming really <laughs> even when you go into the side stories and some things are revealed I was like flabbergasted I loved it the mechanics about the trigger mode, ha, huh, that is so good. That is so well thought out because a police officer and terrorism and guns, like, it's great, it's perfect. <laughs> it, I think it's really well thought out. Also, something I like, surprisingly, I like all the love interests. It is not the case for most Otome games. There's always one character I don't like. So in Code Realize, I didn't like Saijamai. In um, Pio Fiori, I don't like Yang. Is that his name? I forgot mostly about him because I really don't like him. Um, in Amnesia, I don't like Toma? Toma? Thomas? Toma? I'm putting pictures on the screen, you'll know who. So I'm pleasantly surprised that in the entire game, I like all the love interests. I think they're all interesting. I think they're all, romance-wise, they're all great. I've never felt this way. It's kind of weird. I, I'm not sure how to react. Now something I don't like about this game. There is lots of blood, lots of gore, lots of dead bodies. That's not too pleasant for me. But to avoid it, I would just look away. You know, I would read the text, but I wouldn't look up the screen because I can avoid it. It's avoidable, so. But that's one of the things that I was like, ugh. Because I love the dark themes, but there was a lot of gore and blood. It was, it's a lot. Another thing I don't like. So in most Otomi games, the bad endings, it's like, this happens, this happens. In the worst case scenario, like the character dies or the love interest dies. It's not often that it's heart-wrenching, ripping my heart out and stepping on it. The bad endings are awful endings. They're the worst. They're so, mm. I had to take breaks legitimately because it was get like the bad endings were too much. I usually do the like romance route, like the, the perfect ending, whatever you want to call it, the good ending. And then I slowly go to the bad endings. And usually I just end up skipping everything. For Color X Miles specifically, I ended up skipping everything because the bad endings were so bad. I had to take breaks. It was intense. It was sad. There was a lot of trauma. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> So all in all, for the main storyline, all of those things considered, and with the general theme, like I said, you play a rookie police officer that's trying to help a, I guess, a solitary detective group, police force that are no longer with the police to try to stop this terrorist group. And I think it's amazing. I think it's great. So for the main storyline, I give it a nine out of 10. I think it was good. Except for like the intense trauma, <laughs> the trauma I got from playing this game. It's a 9 out of 10. It was really good. Now we're going into the character side stories. The character stories are so good. So, as I said previously, I fell for Mineo Inamoto. He's beautiful. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. I think he's great. He's a goofball. He's so sweet after a while, like forward into his route. He's so sweet. He gets easily flustered the entire time. It's great. He's like, he tries to put a barricade, but it doesn't work. Um, he has a passion for the Sengoku era, like the values and like the style, the fashion, things like that, which also I'm a sucker for. And he cannot deal with women. He cannot deal with women. And I think it is so funny because of course you're a woman. So he's kind of like awkward towards you and doesn't know how to act. And he has a lot of trauma that you'll see in his storyline, but like he has a lot of trust issues and like he doesn't want to like rely on the on the female protagonist. Like they team up eventually and he's like, no, you're not my partner, blah, blah, blah. And you eventually know why. He's very, very fun. I love him quite a bit. Their chemistry is great because their personality are very similar. I love that. There's barely any spoilers 
Like, in his route, there's barely any information given towards the main storyline of the terrorist group, but you do get to see his past, so you get from a very fun char character to very dark. <laughs> but it's progressive. It's not all at once, which is good. I like that. Now for Kei Okazaki. He's my second favorite. He's a sleepy baby. He's a, <laughs> he's a sleepy baby. He's very nonchalant. He hides a lot of his emotions. Um, he's kind of like, he has the vibe of a secret agent, you know? Um, and how he feels is often all or nothing. He either likes you or absolutely hates you and has to kill you. Like he doesn't have an in-between until much later. At the beginning, he's very all or nothing. I love his character design. I love his color scheme. I love his eyes eyes are beautiful. Um, I hesitated a lot to see if I liked him while I was playing it or if I did not like him but then he started getting physically protective and the physical proximity and chemistry and oh, it hit me like a truck and I liked it a lot. It was a little bit out of the blue but I was in. I was in it to win it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> There's angst in his route. Um, kind of like Mineo. There's a little bit of angst but compared to the other stories, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It can get frustrating romance-wise because of all the back and forth, but it's worth it. In my personal opinion, it's worth it. For Takeru Sasazuka. So this was a character that I was like, mm, I'm not gonna like him. He's a tsundere, he's a mean-ass baby face piece of sh- <laughs> But his character design is really good. He has a sweet tooth. He's super tsundere, but once he opens up, he's very honest about how he feels, which is like, mm, yes, please. He has angst a little bit more than the previous two routes, um, but it's still not unbearable. It's there, but it's not unbearable. I didn't like him at first, but then he slowly warms up and that makes me warm up. So I eventually did like him quite a bit. Lots of the main story elements are in his side story um, and you kind of discover them at the same time as him which feels very interactive. I like that a lot. And as I said, I consider myself a bit of a smarty pants so I was trying to keep up with how, like how he was describing and analyzing and I couldn't keep up. So it was so nice to be surprised with his deductions and I was like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. I liked it a lot. For Kageyuki Shiraishi, after I went through Takeru's story, I was like, oh, I like Takeru. I'm not gonna like Kageyuki. It has to be, right? It has to be. He has black cat energy, like very independent, very, I don't want to get attached. And then he gets attached and it's, it's like give and take and it's really nice. Um, this character has so much angst. In my personal opinion, he is the one that his route is the most difficult because it is so angsty, it is so intense. I had to take a lot of breaks with this storyline. There's so many spoilers for the main story and my emotions are all over the place when I played this route. I couldn't keep up. That's why I had to take a lot of breaks. As I said during the main story elements that I was saying, the bad endings are awful, are so bad. In Kageyuki's storyline, the bad endings are god-awful. They're so bad. They're heart-wrenching. Like, you know how I said, take my heart, step on it? Mm -mm. Take my heart, step on it. Have like those big machines with a roller, just freaking flatten it out. I don't have a heart anymore. It's so sad. It's so bad. It's so awful. Like, I feel bad for him. Thankfully, the bad endings are not the good endings, but I feel so bad for him. It was awful. Like, I'm reliving the elements right now. <laughs> but the good end is bittersweet. Oh my gosh, it's so cute and good. And it puts a little bomb on my heart. Ugh, it's good. <laughs> so now for Aiji and Agi, I was like, I didn't like Kagayuki. I'm not gonna like Aiji. That has to be it. There's one character I don't like. It has to be him. I like him too. I like him too. The only thing I was like, he's a like chain smoker. I'm like, please stop smoking. Please, please. It's bad for you. <laughs> he's kind of like in charge of the group and he is considered the main love interest. He's the canon love interest. So through his route, you get all of the descriptions, all of the explanation towards the main storyline with the terrorist group, which is great, but I want more romance with him. 
he's very mysterious. He gives older man vibes. Um, like, he knows how to cook, he knows how to take care of people, he smokes, he's older. Like, there's a different hierarchy, there's a different relation. And I like it. At the beginning, he's very reserved, distant. You have to play very romance forward. So if you're someone who gets like secondhand embarrassment, his route to play is a bit difficult because the female lead has to do most of the romantic advances. I didn't mind it because when I play a game, I completely turn off, this is me. <laughs> so I don't get that. I get the hee hoo when something romantic happens, but I don't get those or secondhand embarrassment when I play. So just keep that in mind if you do get secondhand embarrassment a lot. So because we saw most of the main story elements in his route, there's less romance bits, but they're still really good. When they are there, they are amazing. No wonder he's the main love interest. I genuinely, I like this game. I don't know what to tell you. I like this game. Character side stories, I give it an eight out of 10. If it wasn't for all that trauma dumping and the god awful storylines and traumas, it would be higher, but it is an 8 out of 10. It is, it's still very good. It's great. So all in all, for the main story, it's a 9 out of 10. For the character story, it's an 8 out of 10. The graphics, 10 out of 10. The mechanics, 9 out of 10. The translations, I didn't talk about that, but the translation is a 9 out of 10. Honestly, there's barely any mistakes. So far, it is one of the Otome games that has the less mistakes I've played. So I'm pretty happy about it. So all in all, this game has a total of 9 out of 10. Which means it is over 5 out of 10. It is definitely worth it. Out of all the games I've played so far, it is my favorite. And I want to play Unlimited so bad, but I'm kind of playing another game at the moment. Stay tuned for Café Enchanté. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> I honestly, this game is really worth it. If you are more into darker themes and it's been hard for you to get into Otome games because of the fluff, this would be a good game for you. And even if you don't like, even if you do like the fluff, it's still really good. I would definitely recommend it. And that comes from someone who is terrified of horror. I was scared of Scary Movie 3, which is a spoof. It is a funny comedy movie about horror films. I was scared of that. I'm still a little bit scared of that actually. And I can play this game. That gives you an idea. So thank you so much for watching this review. Up next, I am going to try to either do Café Enchanté or I'm going to do Period Shackles, per Period Cube Shackles of a Meduse. Maybe. We'll see which one comes out. But I've had a lot of fun doing this review and I hope that you enjoyed this review and that it helped you make a decision on whether or not you buy Color X Malice. Especially with the fan disc, I think it's really worth it. So thank you so much, like and subscribe if you get the chance, and if you have any recommendations for a game, leave it in the comments below. I, I do have to play the game at least 80% completed, so I can at least know, you know the main story, but I will be more than happy to play those games that you recommend. So thank you so much, bye!